Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I'm going to be talking about whether you should get a residential property first or whether you should get a buy to let first. Now this is actually off the back of my previous video, well not the previous one, the one before that, where I was talking about basically how I got into property investing and the reason why I'm interested in property investing. So somebody basically asked me the question like, you know, why did you choose to get um, a buy to let first before getting your residential? Considering the fact that you can still get capital appreciation on residential properties also. Now, the reason why, you know, capital appreciation is even coming into the picture is because in that video, I do mention quite a bit that, you know, one of the main reasons why I'm into property is because of capital appreciation. And obviously you can get that with residential properties too. So yeah, in this video, I just kind of basically want to like clear up or explain rather the reason why I opted to get, you know, a buy to let property before even getting a residential one. Hopefully in doing so, this may help you out if you're kind of stuck in between whether you should get a residential first or a buy to let. And as well as that, I'm sure a lot of other people are probably, you know, asking the question, you know, why has she gone ahead and got a property to invest when she doesn't even have a place for herself yet? So yeah, in this video, I'm just trying to clear all of that up and hopefully, you know, you guys enjoy it and find it useful. Okay, so now that I've given you background, I've given you context, so let's answer the question. Should you get a buy-to-let mortgage first or a residential? Now, to be honest, the honest answer is like, it pretty much first of all comes down to your situation and of course your goals. I say your situation because at the end of the day, I do always advise that people should stay at home as long as possible. However, if you're in a position whereby like your home sort of environment is quite toxic, it's not healthy, it's not really great, then you may wanna get out ASAP. And so you may wanna get a residential property first however if this is not the case then you may want to think about you know what your goals are with property is it because you want to supplement your income is it because you want to replace your income altogether so you're tired of working your corporate or other you know salaried role you know what are your goals what are your reasons and then just basically like play those against your situation and to be honest like there's your answer I don't think there's one answer for everybody I don't think it's a one-size-fits-all you literally just need to look at the details of your you know of your life now we all know that in my case I personally opted to get a buy to let investment property first before thinking about getting a residential property. Now although it is definitely harder to get like a buy to let mortgage as a first time buyer if you don't have a residential property, yes that is definitely the truth but there are ways around it and I've gone ahead and explained that in another video which I'll just link in the cards up there if you want to refer to it. So why did I personally decide to go for an investment property before getting a residential property? Well, there are a number of reasons. And the first reason is basically because I was super eager. Like, I was really keen to start my investment journey. And also at the same time, my parents were not trying to, you know, kick me out of the house. They had no issues with me being in the house. And I also had no issues with staying at home in my parents' house, you know, while I started up my property portfolio. If I'm honest, I think they'd rather me stay in that house as long as possible or until I get married before I even move out. So yeah, that's, you know, that's an a story in itself but yeah basically number one reason I was super keen and my environment and situation allowed me to be able to you know stay at home while I started thinking about buying investment properties first. Second reason why I got a buy to let first, um, I just kind of saw it as a residential property would basically be a liability to me. A liability because we all know that first and foremostly, if you're spending something on money and it does not generate you any income, it's a liability, it's not an asset. And secondly, if I go and move out prematurely, especially when I don't have any issues at home or don't have a need to move out and then go out there and buy a residential property for myself, it's almost just like I'm putting myself in more like expenses really when I don't need to. So I'd have a mortgage to pay, I'd have council tax, I'd have, you know, utility bills to think about, I'd have potential, you know, maintenance and repairs to think about. And not forgetting the fact that, you know, when you buy a new property for yourself to move in, obviously you're going to spend a lot of money like trying to get it together and furnish it. So yeah, that's, you know, second reason why I decided to go for, you know, an investment property first before getting residential. The third reason, and to be honest, like one of the top, top reasons, um, to get rental income in. So another form of income, you know, cash flow each and every month. You know, it sounds good, it feels good. So, you know, that is definitely one of the reasons why I was so keen to get a property investment first, because it's paying me at the end of the day. And to be honest, once you've like got tenants in, as long as they're not like difficult, it's kind of like passive income in the sense that you don't really have to do much, like you're chilling and like they're paying you. 
So um, yeah, that's definitely, definitely a big reason why I decided to go buy to let first. The next reason was basically because of, you know, the ability to buy in a cheaper area and basically be able to get on the property ladder a lot sooner. So the place that I bought my investment property is not ideally where I'd like to live myself. And so it's a good way to go around things. You want to get on the property ladder, but you don't have enough money to buy something in London or, you know, wherever you may live. Look elsewhere, look further away from me and you'll be able to get something. So yeah, you know, buying cheaper is definitely another reason why I decided to get a buy to let first. Point number five is basically the ability to kind of use the same pot of money or recycle the same pot of money to build your property portfolio. And this is basically by allowing a property to increase in value or increase in the value yourself and then refinancing, taking money out of that property and putting it towards another property. Now, of course you can do this even if you decide to get a residential property first, but I just kind of feel like there's something about, you know, doing investment property first. Like I kind of feel like if you start with a home for yourself, your main priorities are basically trying to get settled, make the place feel nice comfy to your own taste so in that sense you're going to be focused on spending money to do up the property whereas if you just get started with your investment journey like you're going to be I feel like more determined than ever like you know that there was a path that you've laid out for yourself and therefore you want to go out there and do it and like basically you know kill it really so um yeah I just kind of feel like there's something about getting started with the investment sort of side of things if you know that you want to get involved in property investment and finally, point number six is basically about having that investor mindset. So it's the idea of having your assets or the money that your assets generate pay for, you know, your lifestyle rather than you paying for your lifestyle outside of your own pocket or outside of, you know, the salary that you get from your nine to five or day job. Like, you know, it's just that investor mentality, really. Once you sort of have, you know, a grasp of the idea, you're going to want to try and build on your assets. And so that's why I went straight ahead to start building on my assets, because I want to know that I'm always being paid. And, you know, just have the feeling that even if you're not actively, like, working all of the time, you've got something that you've invested in that is generating money for you, even when you're not actively working on it. So yeah, those are my top six reasons or six reasons really. I can't think of anything else right now. There may be more, but um, that's really what I can think of right now. Um, in terms of now getting a residential property first, I'm going to flip it over and basically talk about maybe why, you know, you might want to get a residential property first, because as I said earlier, it's a, you know, personal circumstances type of thing that like you need to decide for yourself based on, you know, what's going on in your life. Number one, maybe you're unable to live at home with like family or parents. Maybe the situation's you know quite toxic, and you basically need to get out as soon as you can. Um, yeah, that's definitely a good valid reason for you to obviously get a residential property before a buyer to let. There's no point going to go and buy an investment property when you know being at home is like driving you crazy or like there are big issues that like, underlying. So yeah, that's number one. Reason number two, to save on stamp duty. Now, currently in the UK, well, up until March of this year anyway, you don't have to pay stamp duty as a first-time buyer up to £500,000. However, if you're buying a buy to let, even if it's your first property, you have to pay stamp duty, and that stamp duty is 3% up to the first £500,000. After 500000 it increases. So, yeah, if you're somebody that wants to, you know, take advantage of that saving, because it is quite a, you know, a decent saving, um, yeah, you'll probably want to get a residential property first before buying an investment property. Reason number three, your situation might have changed, or maybe it's about to change. So maybe you're going to get married, maybe you're about to start a family, and so obviously you're going to want a home for that. And so, you know, priority-wise, getting a residential property is more important than getting, you know, a buy to let investment property. Reason number four, um, you really just want your own place. Like, you know, you're desperate. Like, you really, really want a place of your own. Somewhere that you can do up. Somewhere that you can, you know, decorate to your own taste and all that good stuff. So that is also another valid reason. And I always say that I feel like it's better to buy your own place if you can afford it rather than renting somewhere. And that's simply because at least you're paying off your own mortgage and not somebody else's. You know, by paying off your own mortgage, at least, you know, the property will be increasing in value as you're doing so. And you're going to get some capital appreciation from it rather than if you're just renting you're obviously not going to get that so yeah those are all of the reasons that I can personally think of of why somebody would want to get you know a residential property first before an investment property if you have any others that I haven't mentioned like please do let me know down in the comments because obviously it's not really my point of view I'm just speaking on behalf of others so um yeah that really brings me to the end of this video I hope you've enjoyed it I hope you found it useful please do give it a thumbs up if you have and please do also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already so um, thank you for watching and I'll catch you later. Bye.